Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Thanks for tuning in today. We are here at beautiful Travis Point Country Club on the 14th hole. And as you can see behind me, I've got a lot of bunkers to negotiate. Today, we are gonna talk about all things green side bunker shots. Okay, so how do we get ourselves set up to hit our, our you know, standard greenside bunker shot? This is a pretty standard shot. I've got to fly the ball about, uh, I'd say about 20 to 25 feet. And then I got a little bit of green to work with so the ball can roll out. Um, oftentimes I see players make the mistake of putting the ball too far forward in their stance. And they also tend to set up too far open. So we're gonna start by creating a nice neutral setup in the sand. I'm gonna identify my alignment and my ball position. So here I have perpendicular lines. One's gonna be my alignment and the other is gonna be my ball position. I'm gonna have my feet, my knees, my hips, and my shoulders just a little bit to the left of this drawn target line. And I'm gonna have the club face open just a little bit. So when I open the club face, I effectively make the club have more bounce and the bounce is the part of the club that will help the club slide through the sand. If you're a player who leaves the club in the sand a lot, you're probably digging too much with that leading edge and there's a good chance that you're not playing your club face open enough. I oftentimes see players do a lot with their arms and hands to try to create lift to the golf ball and while you're your wrist and how your wrist hinge and unhinge is going to be a huge contributor to creating uh, the best outcome every time. We really have to focus on you know, utilizing our trunk, our shoulders, our chest, our upper body to create the energy for these shots. As I've talked about in a lot of other short game videos, the trunk or the top half of my body is going to be the primary rotational force that really energizes this golf swing and creates the force I need to to move this golf ball. What's very important here is that we create a stance that's a little bit wider than you would normally on a short shot. I would say something that's gonna feel more like a seven iron up to maybe even like your three wood potentially, depending on the player. So you're getting nice and wide because we're on the most unstable surface we have in the entire game, it's sand. So we have billions of grains of sand beneath us that are able to move more freely than the turf would. So we want to create a great deal of stability right here and getting wider will help us do that. Then as we get this little wider stance here, I have the ball again in the middle of my stance. I've opened the club face, point it a few degrees toward the right. A great rule of thumb is if the lines on your, on your wedge are pointing back towards your front foot toes, then your face is probably open enough and every player can edit that a little bit based on how they hit these shots. And I really make sure I create a good bit of pelvic tilt here, more so than normal, because as I tilt my pelvis and, and move my rear end back and my chest forward, I'm now creating a steeper plane to swing on, which is really gonna help me hit down to this ball without having to feel like I'm you know, chopping up and down with my wrist. So here I am, my weight's nice and solid. I've tilted a little bit more than normal. I feel like as I've tilted, the handle actually gets lower and as it gets lower, that helps it swing more vertically on the way back. Again, this allows me just to turn my trunk and allow the wrist angle I've created at address to function as a nice little hinging mechanism for this swing. So once again, my stance is nice and wide. I've tilted, you see how low my hands have become now. And now I'm gonna put a little bit of extra pressure in my lead leg by flexing my left knee or my lead knee a little bit extra to create more force in that front leg. I'm looking about an inch to an inch and a half or approximately a ball's width behind the ball that I'm actually going to strike the sand. I'm a big advocate of setting up in a position that allows us to make the same feeling swing sensation all the time with the dynamics that address the face angle, our body position and our pressure in our feet are gonna all create the variation in the, in the launch of the golf ball. So like other short game shots, I'm putting more pressure in my lead leg because my lower body is not rotating nearly as much as my full swing would. And I'm doing it here very wide this time because I'm all about creating stability 
because my top half is going to be creating a lot of force and I need to stabilize it here because when I enter this sand and intentionally hit the sand first, I know it's going to slow down my club head. And the only way to keep this club head moving, folks, is by keeping the handle moving, which is attached to my hands, my arms, and my trunk. So once again, my trunk becomes the engine for this entire shot. So here I am, I'm gripping down a little on the club. I'm tilted. I'm tilted over a little bit more than I would normally on a short shot. I put a little bit extra pressure into my lead leg. And as soon as that pressure gets there, folks, I leave it there until the ball is long gone. Now the handle is low. I'll give myself a couple little shoulder turns to feel that club moving up into the air nicely. And then the last thing I do is I put that last bit of pressure on my left foot. I look down, not at the golf ball, but about that ball's width spot behind the ball where my club is hovering. And then I just focus on turning my chest and shoulders through the strike. I wouldn't take it any other way. You'll see as I finished, I turned very forcefully with the top half of my body, but my lower body only rotated enough to support my top half. We are gonna use this basic concept of setup with tilt, forward pressure, a slightly lower handle and an open club face as our standard as we move around to hit the higher shots, the lower longer shots, and some of the other unique shots that we get presented in these bunkers. Thanks again for tuning in everyone today. I hope you enjoyed today's segment about greenside bunkers. I know that I have had a lot more success when I've adopted these approaches and my students have helped their games tremendously doing the same thing. As always, if you ever have any questions about your own game, comment below. Feel free to like and share with all of your friends so I can help their game. And we will see you next week.